so when people see the adventures of Natty Gann, they're seeing Natty Gann, who is not 14, but 15, or is it reversed? Place this for us. I was 14 years old when I filmed the movie. I'm now 15. So Meredith Salinger goes to school where? I go to school in Beverly Hills at Westlake School, and I'm going into the 10th grade. And we all of us think, wow, the land of movie stars, all of the kids must want to be movie stars. Is that the way it really is? No. I think, I don't think anyone, a lot of, none of my friends want to be in the movies. They like acting at school and school plays, but one of my friends wants to be a psychologist, one wants to be a doctor, a lawyer, you know. So where did your own interest in becoming a movie star come from then? I don't know. When I was eight years old, I told my mom I wanted to be in the movies. And I took acting class four hours a week for seven years. And I just, it was a dream, and I wanted to do it, and I did it. A lot of us spend a whole lifetime looking for something to do that we want to do that much. It came to you early, huh? I was lucky. <laughs> yeah, really. Now, do you think you're going to be able to hang on to that conviction uh, in, in years to come? I hope so. So it's really important to you now? Very important. Now, having done this film, The Adventures of Natty Gann, what do you know now about being a movie actress that you did not know a year ago? It's a lot more responsibility. It's, you know, when kids think about it, when I thought about it, I thought it was just, you know, memorize your lines, go out and do it. And it's not like that at all. There's so much responsibility. And you're working with other people. It's not just you. And everyone has to do their best. So when everyone gets it right, it really works. And it's all a joint effort, and it's hard. And you have to keep up with everyone. You can't say, oh, I don't feel like doing it today. Yeah. A lot of people are depending on you. A lot of responsibility. A lot of responsibility. But I would think it would be easy to kind of choke up with all of that pressure on you. I really didn't feel, I'm, you know, everyone says, my, well, for example, my school is very hard, and they all say, gosh, the pressure is just making me tense. And I'm not the type of person that lets it get to me. I don't ever feel like there's so much pressure on me. When I, during the film, I was doing school along with the film. And whenever there was a break while we were f filming, I would go to school. And, you know, my mom says, how do you do it? And I talk to my friends and they say, how can you do it? I can't even keep up with school at home. But because when, when you have that obligation, you, you pull something inside of you that, that um, oh, I don't even know the word for it, the determination to do it. But now going to school, I'm... Can I just for once? Yes. Okay, Jeff. Ready? All right. But now when you talk about going to school, let's say you're on location in Vancouver. What did going to school mean then? I had a tutor. I had two tutors. And whenever I got a break from filming, I would do school. A lot of actors have to wait around because that's all they do is act. They don't have something else they can do because they're out of school. And I... I was never bored. I was always rushing, always either acting or school. It was hard. Yeah. About Vancouver, it passes for Chicago, it passes for the Midwest, it passes for Seattle, Washington itself. Is that a place that you would like to live? I want to live in Los Angeles, but I like, I mean, it's beautiful up there, and you can breathe, and there's green everywhere, but Los Angeles is my kind of town. <laughs> and yet to be a Los Angelino and to have the training you've had in dance and poise and those things, you said you had to learn to get some rough edges. What did that mean? I would spend hours with Jeremy Kagan, who was the director, just walking, making me take bigger strides and bending more. And um, I took boxing lessons, you know, to toughen me up for the film. So you could not walk like a dancer. You had to learn to galump. Like a boy. <laughs> like a boy, right. <laughs> Well, you have to be kind of a street tough character, don't you? Very, very. She was very tough, and but she had sensitivity. It wasn't the whole move. See, she had different levels to her. She was a tomboy and tough and strong when she needed to be, and when she, she could lend herself to the sensitive side, she was. And she had a lot of sensitivity to her. This is our chance to learn a little bit more about the plot of Natty Gann. What is your quest in search of, and uh, how much of it are you willing to tell us about? It's a quest in search of my father, in the, in the script, Natty's father. Um, it, during the Depression, she runs away from home to find her father who left her to find a job. 
and on her way, her adventure, she meets a wolf who leads her through the forest um, to the north, oh goodness, my geography is terrible, that leads her to the west where her father is. She meets a young boy that they have a little romance and then she's all on her own again. And all of this time people keep trying to persuade you that your father ran away from you and somehow you keep the conviction that that wasn't true. I think a lot of the film was real things that happened in the 30s. A lot of times parents would leave their children and you know for money reasons in the depression because they couldn't afford to have them and these kids would all form groups together or gangs and they would go off and they'd have their own family and you know they say well our father left us and we have to do our own thing and she knew that her father didn't leave by choice but that he had to and she wanted to be with him and it, and it was so important to her her love for her father was so great what about kids of today watching this <sighs> Do you think children generally, let's say kids your age, uh, will be able to relate to that kind of a tough situation where you have to hit the streets like that? I think they'll like seeing it. No, no one's gone through that. I mean, where they're, you know, no one's ventured by themselves across country in the 30s, obviously. Um, I think they'll enjoy the film because of its excitement, and they'll any story it seems so real it's such a real story that you they can understand what's going on they can understand her pain and her wanting to find her father I think that's what they'll enjoy most about it and you've also said that one of the things that uh, you bring to the role at least in the opinion of others was that you didn't act it so much but the emotions you had you really felt that may prove to be the thing that all kids can relate to um, her sensitivity she wasn't just a tomboy. She didn't, I mean, it would be strange just to see someone who didn't care about anything and who just went through the forest saying, oh, I'm going to find my father. <laughs> you know, she, she had compassion to her, and it made her seem so natural, so alive, like a real person. I don't know if I were to talk about some other Walt Disney pictures from years gone by, how many titles I might be mentioning that you have not seen, but you know, Natty Gann is not a Haley Mills kind of comedy. Do you know? Haley Mills. <laughs> okay. See, as, as recently as 15 years ago, there were young actors on the screen in Walt Disney movies that didn't seem quite real. Your little girl, she cusses, she's tough, she can fight, she battles. Is this a modern kind of look for Walt Disney, do you think? I think it's a more realistic look. That not, not everyone is such so goody-goody. Not everyone in a Disney film is so fake or so phony because it's not because people aren't like that. She's so real. She's such a real person. She, she, she's good when she needs to be good and she's tough when she needs to be tough and she's, she's exciting. She's not just one level. She's not just sweet because if you just watch a movie with someone who's sweet, you get bored and it's not a boring movie at all. Don't you think that family films now are letting more of that kind of realism into them? I think the f there's nothing offensive about her character, nothing. She'll, she'll curse, but she curses twice in the movie. They're not bad words. I mean, they're not such horrible words, and they're not just said to be mean to someone. They're said from inside her. They're not words to curse somebody else. They're words that she feels. It's not an offensive movie. She, it's, it's a Disney film with more realistic. In the meantime, it's been your good fortune to work with some remarkable co-stars, including a character you call Wolf, we can call Jed. How did you meet this character? Who are we talking about? Jed is a wolf who's in the film, is my co-star, I guess. <laughs> and um, in real life, I met him in um, Los Angeles at the D Jeremy Kagan's house before I got the part. And I met him as half wolf, half Malamute. In the film, I saved his life from from getting beaten by his mad trainer who wants to beat him. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen an animal with a more expressive face. Did you feel as if the animal were almost a, a, a personal friend after the shooting? You could tell he was so intelligent. It's so strange to see an animal with such intensity. And you, you'd look in his eyes and you could tell that he was feeling something. And because we formed a bond, he trusted me. And 
it's funny, this is, this is strange sounding, because he's an animal, but we were friends. And he, we had a good relationship. So and for a while, you almost thought you were going to get to keep him? Jeremy said at the end of the movie that I could keep him. He was just telling me that so I would perform the next scene, you know, top notch. Um, I knew he was kidding. I would have loved to keep him. And that character, too. Now, this is another new kind of look for Disney, I think. This is not an animal that's like a human being so much. This is still an animal, right? I mean, this is not just a prettied up dog here. They made, actually, they made him look, it's, they made him look more like a wolf in the film. You know, I wasn't supposed to hug him yet. There's one point when I gave him a big hug and a kiss in the, I mean, part of the movie. I wasn't supposed to. Jeremy told me, you know, before that scene, he said, don't hug the animal or don't kiss him because you'll make him look more like a dog we want to because he's half and half if you put him next to a German Shepherd he looks like a wolf if you put him next to a wolf he looks like a dog um, we wanted to bring out the more wolfy side of him so we didn't want to make it seem like he was so gentle so I wasn't supposed to be affectionate toward him but then there was one part in the movie and I just felt like I loved him so much it, it seemed right for Natty to do it also and I did it, and it worked, and it's in the film. And yeah, I think, if I recall, that's the moment when we cut away to John Cusack looking amused about it all. And why don't we stay with John Cusack? Is he, is he kind of a um, larger-than-life figure to you? Did you see him in the movies before you, you co-starred with him? I saw him in class and in Sixteen Candles. Um, I think he's funny. And af the sure thing wasn't released until after we were filming. So, but I... He wasn't larger than life. He was a person to me. And we were friends, and he was a great actor. And I liked him a lot. And I think when you know someone, you don't, when you know someone closely, you don't feel that he's a movie star. You don't, you don't think that he just, you know, he's just a friend. When I, when I saw him in The Sure Thing, and he's still my friend. I don't think of him as a movie star. My friends think, you know, they say, oh my God, you gotta kiss him. <laughs> you know, it's different for them. Than it is for me. In fact, I'd like to follow up on this because Meredith Salinger, not as the movie star, but as the, the student and young lady growing up, uh, what are the movies that you've gone to see? Who are your favorite movie stars? What kinds of films do you think work best for your age group, are the most popular? Um, recently, um, Back to the Future and Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, St. Elmo's Fire. I like all those. They call them the Brat Pack. I like, I like watching them. Would you tell me again what the formula for a successful movie is, remember? Rob Lowe <laughs> and Ali Sheedy and the handsome, you know, the good actor. They're good actors. They're not just, you know, handsome. But you can see what you're doing here. You're not talking stories. You're talking people. Mm -hmm. You're putting the actor first here in a way, aren't you? I think if Rob Lowe is in any movie, people will go to see it. Really, if it's the worst movie, they'll go and see it. But he's a he is a good actor, and a lot of times people don't think about it because he is handsome. You know, my friends, if, if you say Rob Lowe, you don't think actor, you think um, teen idol, looking-wise. But he is a good actor. They're all good actors. They also happen to be gorgeous. You know, what can you do? <laughs> There you are, back in the high school hallways, and soon when the picture is released, you'll be back in your high school, and all of the folks around you, how are they going to react to you? How will they see you now? I have now? no idea. <laughs> I really don't. It hasn't been released yet. Um, right now, people know I've been in a movie, and my friends are proud of me. Um, I think they're all excited for it to open. But you've told me now that you do have to be careful. You have learned what? To say it again. You learn to watch what you say because there could be two people and they'd say the exact same thing. If, if one person said oh, they saw Michael J. Fox and he's really nice and he's short and he smokes and you know they met him and they know a little bit about him. If I said, if someone said that they'd say, oh really you know him? If I said that they'd say, why are you showing off? Why are you, you know? Because it's different. Kids are looking to, a lot of them look to catch you on little things and so you learn to be extra modest you never talk about the industry even if you really feel like you want to because that was a big part of my life three months out of my life doing something interesting something unusual and I want to tell my friends about it and if I talk too much about it you know they'll kind of look at me strange so I don't talk about it the last thing on earth you want to do right now is come across as a movie star is it I don't want to 
I don't want people thinking she's a brat or she's a show off mm -hmm. because and they'll say that even if you're not even if you just are happy about what you do and you want to talk about it they'll think you're showing off now right now you're traveling with the picture and your mother is with you is it important to you that she's here do you need to talk with her sometimes do things come up that the two of you need to get away and just kind of confab about it I'm really lucky to have her she's not we have a great relationship and we're best friends and we talk about everything and we tell everything to each other and she's not a stage mother she's not the type of mother that you know sits there and makes sure your hair's curled right and she's real natural and she lets me do what I feel comfortable doing she also makes sure you know she doesn't say be a good actress she doesn't say do it this way do it that way she's not like that she'll say be a good student and be nice can you share with us without us getting too nosy maybe a session or two that the two of you have had together on the road with the film where you've had to sort of talk things over um, during the film, while we were filming, we stayed together the whole time, and we didn't. We talked mostly about what it's going to be like when I come back. And she told me, you know, we talked about how the kids are going to react to this, and what I just said on film is really yeah. what she told me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's true. Now this is a case where a 15-year-old and a mother. I don't hear a generation gap here. They seem to be right together, you and your mom. We're friends. There's, I mean, I, because we're friends, people would think I would take advantage of her and say, well, Mom, I'm going out with my friends, but she's a mom when she has to be a mom, and she'll be there and say no, you know, and she'll never let me get spoiled, and she says once I start acting like a movie star, I won't be in the movies anymore. Sounds pretty tough to me. She's tough, but she does a good job. <laughs> now, one of the toughest decisions I think to come is going to be movie number two. I mean, uh, the title role in Natty Gann is a big step, but m is a bigger step maybe what's to come, do you think? I don't know what's next. I just signed a contract with Disney for a year, films and TV and movies of the week. Um, I don't know what projects are coming up next. It's going to be a hard decision, though. To ch it, it, you have to make sure you choose the right material, not how big the part is or how small, but it's the material and your performance doing it. In fact, a lot of us don't know really much anymore what, what a person means when he says, I talked to Disney yesterday. When you talk to Disney, who does that mean exactly? That could mean um, Michael Eisner, who's, oh geez, am I going to say these names wrong? Don't put this on tape. You're going to cut this out, right? Uh, this is strictly information. Um, okay, I'll start over then. Talking to Disney would be talking to the head of the TV department or the head of the film department or someone in the public relations area, um, someone who know, has information about what's going on in the film or talking to Jeremy Kagan, who someone with information. Mm -hmm. Or good news for me. <laughs> <laughs> this idea of movies for TV. Now, this is acting, acting. It's not like a sitcom on TV, and I know you have some opinions about that sort of thing. It's a uh, movie of the week is just like a movie that's not going to be opened in the theaters. It'll be on television. It's not a, it's not a joke. It's not a sitcom. It's not. Sometimes it could be comedy. Depends what you do. It's just like a movie, but on television. Um, I would do a series if... It, it, it were a quality part if it had something that could show your acting talent. And we've heard a lot about Meredith Salinger, the actress, and the dedication and the hours and all of that. The consultations with your mom, the career planning. What do you do when you get crazy? What do you do when you want to just get away from everything? I go out with my friends and see a movie or we go to the beach or go swimming or play tennis or just hang out. What do kids do when they hang out? What does that mean? Now, that meant different things to my generation, or did it? I don't know. We have parties. We invite people over and rent a movie or just hang out around the house. And one thing that I'd like to follow up on, too. You're, you're already planning a party. Is that true for opening night my in mom, Los Angeles? My mom talked about she... Um, wanted to have all of my friends, I think this is a little pretentious, but um, to have my friends stand in line to see the movie and her friends and our relatives and big deal and go see the movie then after the movie because I live right where the movie's going to be shown. I live right maybe a block away. 
Unbelievable. Have us all walk to my house and have a party. <laughs> Is that everybody's fantasy of a party or what? I think so. Having all your friends and all your relatives, I think that's a party. And then it'd be nice if Rob Lowe could stop by and just say hello. And <laughs> okay. We'll be consulting with Rob about that. In the meantime, something you do so well, Meredith, if you could look right into that camera lens and talk to any of the kids your age, any of the parents wanting to go out and see a movie, what maybe you would say in, as an invitation to come see Natty Gann? Come see the movie. It's exciting and it's adventurous and it's got a lot of heart and soul and it's a good film for everyone. Teenagers, parents, kids. But they're going to say it's just another Disney picture. It's not a Disney. F it's a Disney film with the excitement of a Paramount film or Columbia or Universal. And it's great. Come see it.